Hello everyone. So, this is a video that's sort of been on the sidelines for a while. However, this is not the form that I thought it would take. You see, about a year ago, I picked up a very cheap copy of a game called Balan Wonderworld. Uh, you may have heard of this game because it received nearly unanimous negativity upon release, and I'm not going to dispute any of that. To be quite blunt, Balan Wonderworld is probably one of the worst games I have played in a very long time. And I've sort of waffled on the idea of doing a video about it because, while I think there's a lot to talk about to really establish why the game is so flawed, it's also a game that made me really frustrated to play through. And the idea of doing a whole new playthrough of it and recording that is almost nightmarish. But let's put that aside for a minute here. If you haven't heard of this game, you're probably wondering, who cares? It looks like some junk for kids. The reason why there was a lot of interest in Balan Wonderworld is because it heralded the return of someone who many people would consider a gaming icon from their childhood. I am, of course, talking about the subject of this video, Mr. Yuji Naka. Yuji Naka is primarily known for his involvement in the creation and supervision of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise at Sega. And I shouldn't need to tell you that Sonic became a huge success for the company. Over time, Naka became someone with more and more authority at Sega, settling into a role as a producer and supervisor for the company. There's a lot of people who look up to this guy as if he was Sega's equivalent of Shigeru Miyamoto, and I have no doubt that the Sonic the Hedgehog projects he oversaw inspired countless future game developers. When Sega restructured after the failure of the Dreamcast, Yuji Naka became one of the most powerful executives at the company. Even other senior staff members who'd been just as important to the success and growth of the company, such as Yu Suzuki, reported directly to him. But in early 2006, he departed from Sega to form his own company, Prope. And even though that company lasted for about 10 years, I don't really think that they achieved all that much, and I'm trying to say that as respectfully as possible. Sure, that company did make some of those fun Street Pass minigames that I enjoyed back in the day, but they never quite achieved any sort of breakout success, and a lot of their output was on Japanese phones, and you probably can't even play it today. And that's really an important thing to note. Yuji Naka, in my opinion, was putting out his most important projects throughout the 1990s and into the early 2000s, a period of about 10 years or so from the creation of Sonic to, let's say, the release of Sonic Adventure 2. Even though he remained at the company for several years after, I don't really think that any of those releases were as significant. Sonic was definitely on a downturn once you get to the middle of the decade, and other projects he oversaw, like Billy Hatcher, uh, Choo Choo Rocket, those remain cult gems at best. So it is sad that he went from a decade of success and influence to a decade of almost complete obscurity in the bigger picture of the gaming industry. But then that started to change only a few years ago. Yuji Naka decided to close down Prope and get a job working for Square Enix in 2018. Um, apparently he was interested in making phone games for the company, but he was convinced by producers to make something that was closer to what he had done in his heyday. A classic platformer. In order to do this, he reached out to an old colleague, Naoto Oshima, who he hadn't worked with since the first Sonic Adventure in 1998, but in some ways Oshima is just as important to that series because he was the artist who created Sonic the Hedgehog, and he worked closely with Naka on various other Sonic releases and projects like Nights into Dreams, which is the game that Balan Wonderworld was very obviously influenced by. So, Yuji Naka, hired by Square Enix, agrees to partner with Naoto Oshima and his company Arzest, and they go on to create a game called Balan Wonderworld. And it was really bad. It, it didn't work at all for me. It had tons of problems. Like I said before, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but I don't think there's any way to look at this other than it being a failure critically and commercially. 
And because Battle and Wonderworld was not a success, Yuji Naka never worked with Square Enix again. Um, and for quite some time, that's the extent of the story. As far as the public knew, that's the end. Until a few months ago, Naka came out of uh, nowhere and claimed that he had actually been fired from the Balan project six months before the game was released, and that he had actually recently finished up a lawsuit with Square Enix. It's not entirely clear what this lawsuit was for. I believe it was wrongful termination, and I have not been able to find any evidence as to whether or not Yuji Naka won the suit. He's at least able to talk about the development of the game, because he was not allowed to talk about what happened online at all. Um, but he can do that now. So, at first, people covering his series of tweets, they were covering it as if it's, it's, it's him really sticking it to Square Enix and saying that it's all their fault. It's there to blame. The game was released in an unfinished state, and it was the publisher's fault. And I understand that shitting all over publishers is a very popular thing to do now. And it is obvious that there were problems with Square Enix and the producers who oversaw Balan, uh, they made mistakes. I think mistakes were made in pretty much every aspect of that game's development, and they did not have enough time to rectify those mistakes for whatever reason. However, when you really read into what Yuji Naka is saying, there's some things that really stick out, and they make it a little suspect. Number one, even though Yuji Naka tries to defend Naoto Oshima's company, saying that they were not allowed to fix bugs with the game, they were stonewalled by Square Enix, he also says that they did not care about the quality of the game. So he's throwing shade and blaming his colleague and his company that actually did most of the work on this game. He straight up says they don't care about quality, which undermines the idea that it was Square's fault, which is also something he kind of tries to push in these statements. He is effectively saying, it's everybody else's fault. He's the one who wanted to fix the problems. No one else did. And that sounds a little hard to believe. Second, when you look at what he's saying about his termination, it really makes it seem as if he wasn't terminated just because he wanted to make a good game and they wouldn't let him. Um, you know, there are a couple minor issues he cites as examples, but these seem like really minor issues, and I don't think could be the ultimate reason he was fired. It honestly sounds as if he was terminated because he was a bad director who was causing lots of problems. Uh, he literally says that the human resources department was partially responsible for getting him fired. There were human resources complaints against him. And do we really think those complaints happened for no reason? Uh, he also claims there were other complaints from other uh, departments on the game. Other producers complained about him. The sales department complained about him. The sound department complained about him. All these people from all these different areas, they have no reason to suggest that somebody should be fired or reprimanded unless they actually did something bad. This is not a woe is me situation for Yuji Naka. It sounds as if he was removed because he was one of the many problems with the project. And unfortunately, it doesn't sound like there was anybody else who could step up and right the ship. It was probably too close to release, there wasn't anything they could do. Perhaps the game could have been delayed, it definitely should have been delayed. Obviously, nobody wanted to release a game that was this bad. But it happened, and it's very obvious when you play it that there were problems behind the scenes. What really irritated me about those tweets is that Yuji Nak is trying to suggest that it's everybody else's fault. But he was the captain of the ship, and I have a feeling that if they hired a different director, and that director didn't behave the way Yuji Naka did, they probably would not have needed to be removed from the project, and that might have contributed to a more smooth development. Uh, I will defend Yuji Naka slightly here. He wasn't really much of a game director, even when he was at Sega or running his own company, Pro. So, being asked to direct a game that is reminiscent of projects that he worked on or oversaw 15 years ago, I imagine that's very intimidating. But ultimately, you have to either rise to the challenge or you step away. And Yuji Naka, he didn't do either of those. He was forced away for reasons that we don't totally understand, but I'm just not sure that I can believe him in these suggestions that he's totally innocent. So that happened. Um, but very recently, within the last week, Yuji Naka decided to get on Twitter once again 
and he did something that ultimately led to me making this video. He posted an image uh, reminiscing about the development of Nights into Dreams. It was an image of, I believe, most of the development team, or at least the, the leadership of the team. Here's that picture. Let's have a look at that picture. Do you notice anything strange about it? Because the second he posted it, everybody noticed. Someone has been crudely erased from this image. And I'm assuming it was Yuji Naka who did the erasing. And if you're wondering who this person is, it's Naoto Oshima because he was very involved in the development of Nights into Dreams. This is the man who Yuji Naka went on to work with to make Balan Wonderworld. They're pretty much the most important people on the project. So this really makes it seem like Yuji Naka had a falling out with Oshima, to the point where he cannot even look at him, and he has to scribble him out of pictures from the past like he's Joseph Stalin. This is an incredibly juvenile thing to do, and really in a year, where there are so many things causing all sorts of cringe going on on the world scale, really, well beyond video games. This somehow, I, it, like, I feel more embarrassed for this than other things. I think Yuji Naka must have realized how embarrassing this was too, because within hours of posting the picture and getting a lot of comments of people finding that really rude, he started going off on Twitter again. He posted three tweets. I'm going to read those tweets to you and offer my thoughts on each one. So the first tweet, he says, How would you feel if you were suddenly removed from a game that you had worked hard on for over two years, and when you went to court, you found out that they had been talking about me behind my back in court documents, and that is why I was removed from the game? So the reason that he was probably removed from the game after... Uh, people were talking behind his back is because they were talking behind his back because they had concerns about him, his behavior, or his ability in the role of director. And Yuji Naka is making it sound like they just casually insulted him when he wasn't in the room, and then fired him because they called him a poopy head or something. I, I really don't, I don't get this. It doesn't quite make sense, unless we have more details, which we don't have. Uh, to my knowledge, the, none of these court documents have come out. And even if they did, most people probably wouldn't look at them because they're in Japanese. So the second tweet, he says, Game creators create games with care for people who play them. Don't you think that people and companies that cannot take care of games are no good? Instead of talking behind my back, don't you think you should tell them directly before removing them? Um, I, I agree with this. I would hope that Square Enix tried to resolve the situation diplomatically in some way. But it's possible that they did, and it didn't work out. And that's why Yuji Naka was basically given a pink slip. We don't really know if we can take him at his word on this. He's claiming he was basically removed for office politics-related reasons, and it's hard to say if that's true. No one has really agreed with him. No one has come out to support him in these claims, to my knowledge. Last tweet. What would you do if you were to be ill for a long time and unable to do anything because of it? And how would you feel if you were the director of an unfinished game and it was heavily criticized? If that's true, then yeah, it must suck to get sick where you can't really help the project and it's having problems. Uh, I imagine that is terrible. And it definitely sucks to be known for making something so bad, when the reasons it's bad might not be entirely one's fault. And I, I don't really like the game, uh, and I, but I don't blame Yuji Naka alone for this, because obviously a lot of factors that we don't fully understand went into this development and all of the problems. Um, I would never blame Yuji Naka alone, but at the same time we do have to remember that this game was generally marketed as Yuji Naka's return to game development, and that is probably the main reason why he's been singled out in a lot of criticism, uh, because he was part of the marketing. But either way, Naka is missing the point in all three of these tweets. None of these tweets, none of the information he has provided, in any way justifies behaving like a psychopath and erasing Naoto Oshima from a picture from decades ago. At no point has Yuji Naka expressed what Naoto Oshima did to deserve this. If there's some kind of serious vendetta that is going on between these two, 
uh, <laughs> we don't know what it is. Uh, I don't think Oshima's commented publicly on any of this, and I don't think he really needs to. Really, all of this, it just shows me that this is a man who, much earlier in his career, he had so much power. And he's not used to being in this position where he had to answer to people, where he's not the god. He's not the executive producer who is above criticism or punishment. And in a weird way, I feel like that's really what hurt him the most with this project. He was the director of Balan, and they didn't need him. Or at the very least, he gave them a reason to decide they didn't need him. He's desperately trying to blame everyone else and minimize his responsibilities, but it's really obvious that he shares responsibility for what happened. And he has apologized for the state of the game, but at least the, the tweets that I saw of his, he didn't really accept that it was his fault. All of these statements, they're trying to blame everybody else. It's everybody else's fault. If they had just listened to him, it would be great. But we don't know that. And I don't think that's true. That just sounds way too idealistic. He is far from the only director who's been fired from a project. And ultimately, a lot of times, that will cause problems. Even if a director is removed from a project for whatever reason, that does not automatically absolve them of criticism. Don't forget, he was removed with only six months left in development, so it is not like Yuji Naka was removed very early on, where he probably didn't have much of an influence on the game. And I know I said I wasn't going to talk about the game in, in, in that much detail, but I will say, Balan's problems, they go way beyond bugs. The fundamental design of the game, it really just does not work, and even if Naka had not been fired, I'm not convinced that a lot of those issues would have been dealt with, because I think that was just the flawed design that they thought would work. So that stuff really frustrated me, but what I have not really talked about is the other side of Yuji Naka, because I've discussed his time at Sega quite positively, but it's important to know that there are a lot of stories out there from over the years about how Yuji Naka was not a pleasant person to work under during his time at Sega. And I obviously can't go through every single claim that I find, but here's just some of the ones that I've seen in the past. Uh, and they resurfaced in light of what he was saying. People were throwing these accusations at him. They're saying, you're claiming that this happened to you and it's bad, but you did the same thing to other people. We can trace these things back quite early on, because he actually almost quit Sega after the first Sonic game released, because he had a lot of problems with other employees or his bosses. And what he ended up doing instead was he joined the Sega Technical Institute, which was a division of Sega that was based in America. Um, so he could continue to work on projects, but he was not in Japan anymore, and he didn't have to worry about those people that he had problems with. But even this process didn't go super smoothly, because Naka reportedly did not get along with the American employees at the STI, who assisted in working on Sonic 2. Uh, there's a quote from one artist even calling him an arrogant pain in the ass. And after Sonic 2 was released, uh, reportedly, he refused to work with any Americans on any future Sonic projects, so they actually created an entirely new team at STI of just Japanese people so that they could do Sonic 3 and Knuckles and not have to worry about any English speakers, essentially. Um, I don't know if his reason for having problems with Americans came down to him just not speaking English very well, but uh, it seems like he didn't handle that in the most graceful manner from what people have said. So a few years after this, he goes back to Japan to run Sonic Team, and he is working on a lot of games, including Nights into Dreams. He tasked the Sega Technical Institute with developing a fully 3D Sonic game called Sonic Extreme. And this project had a lot of problems, too many to get into, but there's been a lot of history on this game. Uh, but they were trying to fix things in one way by deciding to use the same engine that Sonic Team from Japan had used to make Nights into Dreams. And this is where things get a little bit fuzzy because as I record this script that I've typed out, Yuji Naka is actually in the process of disputing these claims. He really is. But for quite some time, there have been claims that Yuji Naka refused to let STI use the Nights into Dreams engine to make Sonic Extreme. And he may have even threatened to quit Sega if they were allowed to use it. Now, there are also claims that the reason he was that angry 
was because he had said that they couldn't use it, and then he later found out that they had been given the materials anyway. Uh, right now, he's claiming that it was not even possible for the engine to be given to another team, and that it is a lie or a baseless rumor, and I don't really know what's true, but for a long time, people have attributed Sonic Extreme getting cancelled and the STI getting shut down to Yuji Naka refusing to share his game assets with another team at Sega. And not just any team, a team that he used to run. So make of that what you will, but that is something that I saw a lot of people citing. And if that's not enough, I've got another story. This is my personal favorite. In 1998, before the Dreamcast released, Yuji Naka visited America. He was touring the Sega offices there. He was having a look at a game called Geist Force, which was supposed to be a, a Star Fox uh, type shooting game. Uh, and he was looking at it, he was looking over the tools they were using to make this game, the technology uh, that the devs were using, and he was speaking Japanese to his uh, associates at the time. And they were talking about which parts of the tech he would want to take so that they could use to make Sonic games. And then he said that they should fire all but one of the engineers uh, working on Geist Force because they don't need the game, they just need the one person who knows how the tech works so that it can be easily integrated into Sonic games. What Yuji Naka did not realize is that most of the developers in the room actually did speak Japanese and they heard everything he said. Like, they heard that he said he was going to fire basically all of them. So these developers quit because they didn't want to get fired. So Geist Force was cancelled, and it never came out because they had no development team at this point. Granted, Geist Force also did have other behind-the-scenes problems, like Sonic Extreme, but even if development was going fine, losing almost all of your staff is probably going to kill a project. There's also claims that Yuji Naka leaving Sega in 2006 was partially to blame for that year's Sonic game being as big a disaster as it was, but personally it makes a lot more sense to blame Sonic Team as a whole for making an already struggling project doomed to fail by splitting it into two terrible games instead. I don't really blame Yuji Naka solely for a lot of my issues with certain Sonic games, in the same way that I do not blame Yuji Naka solely for a lot of my issues with Ballad Wonderworld. You know, let's make that clear. Now, Yuji Naka is not the only producer who's a hard ass or difficult to work with, but I think it's pretty obvious that in this decade, we acknowledge that we don't want those kinds of people in control. We don't want hostile environments. We don't want people worried about getting fired because a studio bigwig would rather take your work and use it to promote their own game. And when you look at all of these stories, and you look at Yuji Naka now, you don't have much of a reason to think that he has changed, because he's acting like a sore loser. Failure is really difficult to deal with, and people compartmentalize it in very different ways. But it's important to understand that there are so many other people who have dealt with failure in a much more dignified and respectful way than this. If you learn from your mistakes, and if you keep your head down, and work. Your career is not going to be over. You're going to find something else you can do. There are people who have bombed way worse than Yuji Naka in high profile situations, and they have still managed to continue on in the same field. The problem for Naka is that he's at the point now where he, he said he's considering retiring from game development, and given that he put out a crappy phone game with absolutely no ambition after Balan. I'm honestly not sure that he has anything left to give us. And that's fine. It's just really unfortunate that he's in the process of tainting his legacy. Who's going to want to interview this guy and ask, what are the things you have to do to make a successful game? You know, when we know how he's behaving behind the scenes and publicly at this point. I just can't understand this attitude. Having this attitude at this point in your life, to be so mad at someone, that you want to scribble them out of a photograph from the past, but at the same time you're posting this photograph because you want to bask in the recognition for your past accomplishments that that person was involved in. It's incredibly gross. It really is. That's all I have to say about it. There have been quite a few game developers from all over the world, not just Japan, who were big in the 80s or 90s, and they tried to stage these comebacks, and it didn't work out. Keiji Unifune is probably the biggest example that comes to mind for a lot of people. But I think that all of this 
with what's happening with Naka right now, it's it's so much more uncomfortable, and it's just sad by comparison. It's just sad. You know, we, we've we've ranted a lot. I I, I want to remind people, Yuji Naka, nowhere near as bad as um you know the alleged predators that we have been seeing at other companies over the past year. I'm not saying that he's as bad as them. And I would never lump this guy in with those people. A lot of those people are still kind of anonymous, which is terrible, by the way. Um, I, I just I just don't really get why this is a thing. Why do we have to see this grown-ass man acting like a spoiled child because of what happened? And it's almost like he's trying to drum up support from his fans, who are really only fans of the things he did when they were children, as if it's going to make a difference. And it's not. Balan is done. It's over. And it's not coming back. And no one's going to give Yuji Naka a second chance if this is how he's going to behave. Because what assurance do they have that he's going to do his job appropriately, and, and that if he, if he has to leave the project, or even if he doesn't have to leave the project, that he's not going to try and twist the narrative after the fact to make himself look like the saint and everyone else is the sinner. I'm a big fan of hearing what developers have to say about the projects that they've worked on behind the scenes. That sort of thing can really change your perspective. This does not do that for me. Not even a little bit. This just reinforces how I already felt about the game. It's very sad, and it's uncomfortable. Doesn't make me want to revisit Balan Wonderworld anytime soon. Uh, you know, maybe I will do a video or something where I give my actual thoughts on the game, isolated from, from this. If you're curious, of course. Uh, but for now, I just can't believe that even if it's tangential, I can't believe that Balan Wonderworld is continuing to to resurface uh, in the gaming uh, news cycle uh, purely through these outbursts on social media. Yuji Naka is really ensuring that Balan Wonderworld goes down as one of the most infamous games of all time thanks to his behavior. And that's really all I have to say about that. This video is probably a lot longer than I intended it to be, um, but I, I guess I had a lot to say about him. What are your thoughts on all of this? Uh, maybe you don't totally agree with me on this. That's fine. Um, but I think we can all agree that game developers, especially people in places of power, really need to carry themselves with more respect. At the very least. That should be a given. Uh, please try to enjoy the rest of your summer. I'll see you around.